Uh, morning everybody, welcome to our workshop for the start of the week. Uh, just a quick review of last week, FTSE 130 up to uh, just over 2% down, 246 points up, 1.8. Uh, S&P 17 points, we closed above 1500 for the first time as we'll see on this chart showing here on the screen uh, since really the last part, the very last part of uh, 2007. So uh, a significant move there and you can see uh, this is actually the weekly chart of the Standard & Poor's 500. So this is the broadest and most wild, widely followed index in the United States. In fact, it's the largest index in the world by market cap, uh, targeting 1560s really um, on the weekly chart. Um, having reached a psychological level, it's a possibility it may pull back, but risk on is very much uh, the mode at the moment on the markets. Equities up, bonds down, dollar down, commodities mixed. Um, generally, data has been quite positive in the developed world. Um, here we're looking at our calendar for um, the week ahead. Uh, but just before I do that, you know, we can just review what happened last week. The German survey, ZEW and EFA are a lot better than expected, giving us further encouragement to following what was fairly disappointing Q4 data in uh, GDP data in Germany. United Kingdom, what happened there? We had a GDP number of Q4 GDP, a very dis dis big disappointment for the markets. Uh, although the picture is not one of an economy that is in dire straits, it's just bumping along the bottom. Um, I think there is a view that uh, the GDP is prone to revisions and uh, we've noted that uh, already the first two quarters in 2012 have already been revised higher and I think in light of the un unemployment or employment data in the UK, um, which is we've got record number of people in jobs, although with the population expanding, the, the unemployment rate still remains quite high, although it has been improving. Uh, in light of that, it's unlikely that the GDP would have fallen as much as it has been reported in uh, December for the last quarter ending the end of December. So um, that will happen. We'll see how that pans out in the months to come. But most importantly, it had a, a fairly dramatic effect on uh, uh, the British pound. The British pound against the dollar has uh, fallen quite significantly. I'm looking here. Let's just get a daily chart here just to show you. Uh, a significant fall. Contrast this with the euro. The euro has been making great gains against uh, the dollar, uh, whilst the sterling has been losing ground against the dollar. So, in fact, sterling has lost considerable ground against the euro. But we're touching a key level here around the 157 level as we speak. Um, I think it's likely that we might see a little bit of backing and filling. But uh, longer term, I think the target is this sort of 154.70 area. So, you can see what happened in the sort of July, August time when we had a sweeping move up from this sort of level that we're at at the moment all the way up to this pivot here, which was established from April last year. Um, so that's quite a sharp rally. And this is the reason why we've seen this um, equally sharp fall, retracing all those games, probably down to the fact that um, there's quite a bit of... Uh, uh, people exiting the, the safe haven, as it was described, of sterling when the risk, uh, the, the euro breakup trade was prevalent last year. Anyway, uh, that's what's going on there. The euro is pretty steady, as I said at the beginning of this piece, um, on the back of some fairly good data from Germany. Positive news from the long-term refinancing uh, operation facility where banks have agreed to pay back a whopping 137 billion, and that was announced on Friday. Uh, longer term, I think the euro could be trading up anything up to as high as 137 uh, but for now I think it needs to sort of hurdle this uh, 134.85 level. Let's have a quick look at the euro against the dollar uh, and as we can see on the daily chart here that I'll just put up um, I think it really is um, it's this sort of level here really around that 134 um, uh, sort of 134.80 area and it needs to hurdle that um, those levels last achieved um, a lot, uh, over a year ago. Okay, um, Asian markets are a bit, bit mixed overnight. Nothing really too much to report. Let's have a little quick look at the data. Um, we've got effectively FOMC. Um, let's get uh, our calendar here. Uh, we've got the FOMC um, out this week, which is the Interest Rate Setting Committee from the Federal Reserve, the U.S.'s central bank. Uh, we're not expecting anything there, given the policy changes in December, uh, where they announced this open-ended asset purchase of uh, $85 billion a month, and that's until the jobless rate falls to 6.5%. But the most important data this week is non-farm payroll on Friday. Um, been looking pretty good. I wouldn't be surprised if we see uh, a revision to the previous number of 155. Before we get the unemployment data on Friday, we have a, a lead up to that uh, from the ADP um, organization. They have their own um, non-farm employment change. That comes out at 115 on Wednesday. 
Um, can be a little bit volatile, but I'll give us a, an idea about what's going on. Initial claims on Thursday, that's another one important. It's, although it's a weekly bit of data, in the week of non-farm payroll, it uh, assumes more relevance, um, but it has fallen sharply in recent weeks, which is probably more likely distorted by um, seasonal issues. Um, but um, generally, I think we're looking for a fairly positive number from uh, non-farm payroll. Um, thanks very much for listening. Good luck with the trading. We reconvene again on Wednesday morning this week. Um, thanks very much for listening. Bye for now.